Today we're checking out the Behringer Ultragain Pro MIC2200. This is a dual channel microphone preamp. I'm gonna show you how it sounds because most of the videos about this online suck. So let's get into it. All right, let's get into it. So welcome back folks, my name's Shane. Today we're checking out this dual channel microphone preamp. Now you might be wondering why I bought this. There's plenty of other brands out there on the market, but for me it was a price consideration as well as how good these sound. I've actually owned one of these in the past and it was really, really good. I was the first person in the world, I think, back in 2006 to put a video up on my main channel about this. The video is terrible, so don't go looking for it. It's just awful. I think it was back before I was actually editing my videos. It was just a terrible, terrible video. So this particular unit for me was a gift. I actually turned 40 recently and I've been doing a lot of podcast stuff and a lot of things with this Rode Procaster microphone. So the reason I wanted this is this is a very low output mic and I wanted something that would push the front end of my sound card just that little bit easier and better. So I didn't have to keep stressing about having to crank up the gain on my actual audio interface. Now my audio interface is fine, it's just that this is a really low sort of output microphone and what that means is I have to crank up the gain, you tend to hear a bit of noise. So I prefer to keep the preamp on the actual interface down and this will push that. I don't care if the, the valve or the tube in the center does anything or not, I actually just wanted it because I know from just experience with their little mixes and also owning one of these in the past, it should do a really good job. And I wanted something compact that I could put back behind there as a rack unit. So let's open it up and then we'll see how it sounds. Included in the box, we actually get the tube preamp. We get the kettle power cable. We also get some instructions and one of their stickers. It's been about eight years or so since I sold my last one of these. So I wanna just give it a quick once over and see how it feels in the hand. Let's turn some of these controls. Now in terms of how the pots feel, they feel great. They're actually notched. I don't remember that back in the day, but maybe they were like that as well. The tension on them feels really good. All the buttons feel really good as well. It's slightly unbalanced and I'm thinking it's just the front. Yeah, okay, so if I put some rubber feet on it or something, it would be fine. But yeah, it's just this raised piece of metal underneath as well. Just doesn't quite sit 100% flush, no big deal. So rather than bore you with an overview, I'll do that coming up at the end. Let's plug it in and actually see how it sounds. Here's the way I've got all of this connected. So I've got the Rode Procaster going into the Ultragain Pro via an XLR audio cable. Then out of that, from the back of the Ultragain Pro into the XLR input on the UR22 MK2 sound card. Now, just to let you know, where I'd normally have to run the gain is about here without this actual Behringer unit. Now I've actually got it sitting at about 10 o'clock. It's probably a bit hard to see there. Let me just move this over. So the gain is, you know, less than 12 o'clock, which is really, really cool. It means the noise is gonna be kept down. So let's check this out. So the setup that you're hearing and listening to right now is simply what I just explained. We've got the microphone going straight into the preamp. I'm not pushing either of them very hard, but it should be enough. And as you can see, probably back here, I've got more than enough audio signal. I can boost that up in post or I could simply just crank up the output or the input on the sound card or the output on the actual Behringer Ultragain Pro. But I like to keep the levels pretty safe and I usually adjust that in post. So if I happen to speak loudly at any point, it's not gonna get to the point where it's gonna distort, hopefully. No, it didn't distort. So that's how I like to run it. I'll show you some of the features and the low cut thing I think on here is really, really cool. So let's check it out. Right now you're actually listening to my shirt microphone because the audio will definitely sound different. One of the great things I like about this is the fact it's got a low cut button, which is essentially a high pass filter. What that means is you can turn that on and you can cut or high pass the filter at 60 hertz, which I think is pretty sweet. Let's have a listen to how that sounds now on this microphone. So it's taken out a lot of the bottom end and this will help with plosives, those B and P words that tend to boom the microphone. My voice sounds a whole lot kind of thinner and it's a little bit more airy sounding now, which is a really great sound as well. I'm gonna go back to the unit and actually turn that off and show you the difference. And this is how it sounds with it off. As you can hear now, I've got a whole lot more bass back in my voice, unless you're listening on a phone speaker, you probably won't hear the difference. But most people who are listening with headphones or studio monitors or good speakers should be able to hear a difference. I'll click it in again. I would never usually use this at 60 hertz. For me, set it up to about 30 or 40. That will usually be fine. That's where I'm gonna leave it. But I thought I'd make it obvious you know, how different it is with it on and off. And you can fine tune this however you like as well. 
So just off camera, I had a good play around with the EQ sweep and I've come up with this one. I think this sounds pretty good. It definitely sounds like a more processed track and the audio that you're hearing will be untouched from the computer other than just changing the levels and probably running a limiter on there or something. So I'm not going to post EQ any of this stuff on the computer. It's going to be dead flat and that's how that sounds. So overall, it sounds pretty great. And right now, I'll just go back to showing you how it sounds flat again. And this is how it sounds now with the low cut enabled and the EQ back off. I think this sounds really great. This is how I'm going to run it for my particular setup. If I do need to EQ anything or run anything over the actual audio at the end, I can do that in post, but I just wanted to get a nice clean signal. And this microphone now sounds way better going through this unit than just straight into my sound card. No doubt about it. This is one of those mics, much like the Shure SM7B, that is just a really low output microphone most people think when they buy one of these podcasting microphones they plug them in and it's going to sound great that's not always the case unfortunately you do need to have some sort of preamp to get the most out of these you can also get lots of different units but if you want to find out about this particular one i'll leave some links through to bnh and you can check it out online if you're starting a podcast they're a really great investment and this also has two channels as i mentioned as well so you can run two microphones into this thing and then out into a sound card that has two xlr inputs Pretty cool. Right now, I'll give you a quick overview of what I think are the most important things to take note of on this device. So over here, we have a plus 48 volts button. This is for condenser microphones that require phantom power. Push that in and it will power your microphone. One of the great things about it as well is even if you've got headphones on, sometimes when you push, or usually when you push a 48 volt phantom power button in, it gives you a really big pop in the headphones. This won't do that. It actually has a sort of, uh, sort of protection against that so you don't blow your ears out, it's pretty sweet. Now down here we have a mic and line button. Anytime you're using a microphone, push this button in, it will light up and then you're good to go. If you want just the line signal, you can also just push the button and it will pop back out nice and simple. Now if you're running two microphones, say you're recording uh, two mics on an electric guitar amplifier or something like that and you're getting some phase issues, push the button in on one of them and it will reverse the phase and that will help in those situations. Most people won't ever need that, so just leave that out. Over here, we also have a low cut button as well. This is a high pass filter, and we can change where we want that to become active. I would usually leave this around 40, and that would be about fine. This octave bandwidth and dB level I'll get to in the video, as well as these two buttons. It's something that I don't plan on using hardly ever, so I'll give you a quick example of how that sounds with it enabled, but it kind of sounds better without any of this stuff. Now, if you do want to mess around with this octave bandwidth and dB level, push this button in and it will activate that particular circuit. What I really like about this is how many LED lights there are on the output level. So this is the output level going to your actual sound card. You want to make sure you've got a healthy signal without pushing it too hard that it's clipping. If your mic is distorting or clipping, you'll see this little LED indicator light up over here. If it does that, simply turn this down and you should be good to go. And also make sure on your audio interface, it's not clipping as well. And this is adjust the output to the actual audio interface. I found at 12 o'clock to about one o'clock works extremely well. Now the right side of the Ultra Gain Pro is identical to the left, so it's two identical channels, power on and off over here. On the back of the unit, we get four inputs and four outputs. That's right, but it's only two channels. So what does that mean? We get a mic input over here for using any type of microphone always use this connection right here. If you want to use the line in, simply use this over here. Now in terms of the outputs, we get two different outputs. We get the balanced XLR output over here, as well as a jack output, and we get the same on the other channels as well. So we get the same two inputs I've just showed you on channel two. And this is great because it allows you to essentially be able to hook it up to anything. I would also suggest using this, you get a little bit more volume, usually out of these balanced XLR outs. Just go for them anyway. They're just generally a little bit more stable. There you have it, folks. Thanks for watching. My name's Shane. I just thought I'd also take off this pop filter and just show you how it sounds, talking kind of like across the top of the microphone, which is kind of how you're supposed to use these. You don't want to sort of just talk straight into it. You get a lot more sort of plosives that way, the low-end boom that kind of blows the uh, diaphragm around a little bit too much. So hopefully this sounds pretty cool. If you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up i hope this is an improvement over my original video my original video was just terrible but it was a sign of the times back in 2006 it was the stone age on youtube back when 240p was king so this is in 4k and uh yeah it should be hopefully a better archive of video about how this can sound for podcast applications or just voice in general if you're a singer you can get some use out of it also thanks again for watching folks my name's shane i'll catch you on the next video see ya